hit the high notes I have a voice, have a voice in the golden night You held me down, but I fought back down There's a scream inside that we all try to hide And we hold on so tight, we cannot deny it eats us alive Oh, it eats us alive
Thank you all so much for including me on your inclusive day. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you, Joy. Let's have it. Let's hear it for Joy, everybody. And her little surprise guest as well. Let's hear it for her. Come on, give it a little wave. Is everybody enjoying their pride today? I can't hear you. Are you enjoying your pride today? Come on, Bermuda. The sun's out. The sweat is on, the love is all about. All right guys, as we get ready up here, we are going to introduce our next performer who is going to be performing a poem, Miss Tiffany Painter, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Pride, Bermuda. So I just wanted to say thank you to the organizers of Pride, as well as those who have organized the past with two words and a comma, with marriage equality. I want to thank Out Bermuda. This poem today uh, that I'm going to share with you, I wanted to, uh, my, my daddy is my favorite person. <laughs> I'm a daddy's girl. I don't have daddy's ish, daddy issues, but I'm a daddy's girl. And uh, my daddy is my favorite person. And in his ideal world, um, in my ideal world, he'd be here today. In his ideal world, I wouldn't be gay. So this poem is dedicated to the parents that are here today and the parents that couldn't be. Um, so if you could give me a moment of your time while I share uh, a little bit of what coming out meant to me in this poem called Daddy. I'm joined by lovely violinist Allison Black. So can I get a round of applause just to cheer me up? So I can shake some nerves off. Daddy, you never remember my memories. You used to guard my dreams. I swore you spent days axe battling the boogeyman in my closet and the monsters under my bed. I swore you spent nights sleepwalking the hallway between our rooms 
and you were water for the dragons, and you were fire for the ghouls. Your history taught me how to see the system. Before I could even spell resist, you had me prepped for the resistance. I remember stories of fists, leather jackets, and how you lit buildings owned by bigots. Daddy, you were my Ferdinand with flowers and hoofs. But now you are all horns. See, I never wrote you in as one of them. Not when it was you spelling out the tyranny of isms, but I didn't see Jesus coming. My eyes couldn't bend around the corner of your baptism. So before I am the lesbian waiting for two words and a comma, I am just a daughter searching for a rescue poem for her father. If only words were a bridge of stones across the ones you've thrown, I'd replace my armor for pajamas and you'd already be carrying me back to bed. Daddy, have you forgotten how your souls were once the winds lifting my airplane body? How your arms embraced me like a runway. How you built me strong. Strong enough to survive stepped on. But lately, I've been boxing your souls and icing my fists. Lately, my head feels knuckled and my heart puddles when you step. The night you left me homeless. I felt like the top hat after the magic act, emptied of extraordinary. You never remember my memories. I always left my Barbies butched up and buzz cut. A G.I. Jane figurine for each Jasmine. My Easy Bake saw more mud pies than cupcakes. I was ready for the revolution at 10. But by 18, I knew liberty, statued and feminine, holding the torch of me between her thighs. I thought that the idea of grandchildren would crumble your Berlin walls, but the bricks of your shame were iron. You said that any child of mine, adopted or otherwise, would be a heathen delivered into hell. And the well of me was emptied of all water and all wishes. to love you now because the truth is I still need to curl up on your belly daddy my breathing half moon on a sky of blankets at seven I'd listen to your blowhole half expecting you to spray the sea out I swore there were oceans inside you oceans piled like sapphires high and deep Oceans of anemones for the clown of me. Daddy, I never told you that your love was my alphabet. That now I carry a language inside of me in webs of I am's and I am. A thousand Charlottes for your pot belly because you are terrific, radiant, and humbling. You are a blue ribbon existence. So I am quilting a silk banner in your doorway, trying to make poetry save our love. 
from the slaughter of religion. Daddy. Thank you. I want to thank my family that's here today, my brother and my niece for supporting me. It's a big deal for me to have family here. So thank you. Happy Pride! Give it up for Tiffany. Tiffany paint up. Back by Allison. Come on, give her a round of applause. Where's Mike? Where's Mike? Hello. Let's hear it. All right, thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, Allison. Y'all were beautiful. All right, next up, we would like to welcome to the gazebo four panelists who spoke last night at Hamilton Princess. They have come from different parts of the Caribbean, from Guyana, from Jamaica, from Trinidad and Tobago, and they have all helped bring pride to their islands and are here to welcome pride here in Bermuda as well. So let's give a round of applause for Davian Nelson, Rowan Muhammad, Rudy Hinamaji, and Dr. Natasha Rambaran. Here they come, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give a warm from Union welcome to our Caribbean family. The water's coming up. Can you turn this up a little bit? Can you turn this up, please? We're looking for Hello Wilson. Hello Wilson, see a policeman near you or come to Gazeba in the next couple of minutes. Or else go get on a buying spree with your credit card. <laughs> Happy Pride! Here, come, 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 come close, come to the center, come to the center. Ever? No. She alive, she alive, she alive, she alive today. All right, let's just uh, may y'all introduce yourselves and tell us where you're from, and uh, and what you do, and uh, how you're enjoying your day here in Bermuda. We'll start with you, love. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, Sue Angling, in Jamaica. I work at an organization called JFRAG, and we are an advocacy and social justice organization. We do advocacy for LGBT people living in Jamaica, and uh, we just celebrated our fifth pride, um, August 1 to 6. So we're very happy to be here. Um, I actually can't believe that this is your first pride, because this is a huge aspect. Oh. A huge crown for your first prize, so congratulations. And yeah, we're happy to be here. I'm enjoying a snowball. Um, in Jamaica, we call it snow cone. So I was there saying, no, I want a snow cone, not a snowball. And then I realized it was the same thing. So yeah, good vibes, good people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi everyone, happy Pride Bermuda. Um, so my name is Ron Mohammed. I am originally from Trinidad and Tobago, but I live and I work in Barbados. Um, and we had our first Pride last year and I was one of the coordinators. And this is Pride goals. Like today I turned around and I looked at the crowd and I was like, there's so many people. So congratulations to you all. This is incredible, it's amazing. I wanna come back every single year. Um, <laughs> I don't have much else to say, but happy Pride. Hello, um, I'm Jay, I'm from Jamaica, I work with Soil at J Flag. Um, very happy to be here, congrats Bermuda on your very first Pride celebration. Huge turnout, have a happy, happy Pride. Enjoy the rest of the day. Hi everyone, happy Pride. Um, I'm Nastasi Rambaran, I'm uh, from Guyana, but I live in Barbados. I'm here representing Sasod, which is one of the organizations that was involved in pl planning Pride in Guyana last year. Um, we had our first Pride Parade last year. And I'm so happy to be here. This was amazing. This was kind of unreal, the amount of people that turned up today. And it's just great vibes and happy Pride. Thank you. Happy Pride, Bermuda! 
from Trinidad and Tobago. Let me tell you what I told our Pride supporters on our first Pride. Look at your watches. Remember the time that you made history because don't take it for granted. That's what you are actually doing. You are living proof that you must, you can, and you should do because love is love. So welcome to your first Pride. Thank you for having us. And you're all invited to Trinidad and Tobago for Pride next year. And we all want to really congratulate your coordinators and all the stakeholders, Liz, Chen, Dave, the rest of the crew, all your stakeholders, and Beyond Homophobia, Moji, who brought us all together in Jamaica. And I think the last message is stick together, love one another, support one another, and let's ensure that love is love. Happy Pride. Let's give it a hand, let's give a hand to all of our Caribbean family here to support us in our first prize. <laughs> Smile for the camera. Y'all are beautiful. Have a great time, okay? We'll see you around. All right, now I'm ready. All right, ladies, gentlemen, and everybody in between, we are next going to offer up some words from the Stubbs family. So we'd love to welcome them up to the podium when they are ready. Come on, let's give a big round of applause for this family. Hi everybody. My name is David Stubbs. John Stubbs is with my father. I'm here with my sister Clemmy, her fiance Katie, my stepmother Robin, brother Robert. It's bittersweet sweet to be standing here and speaking to you about my father, Dr. John Stubbs. I wish he had paid more attention to his health. He might well have been speaking to you today instead of me, and here with his friends, his best friends, Stan Rattery and Harry Vera, and I think all three of them would have gotten a kick out of today. Dad died 25 years ago, having never met any of my or my siblings' life partners. My lovely Katya, Helen's husband, Neil, Michael's husband, Bill, or Clemmy's fiance, Katie, or any of his five grandchildren. And I'm thrilled that Clemmy and Katie have come here just for the weekend from Birmingham for Bermuda Pride. In January 1993, after a night of terrible back pain, Dad woke up with continued pain and limited mobility. After getting x-rayed, Dad diagnosed himself accurately as having prostate cancer with secondaries in his spine. Surgery in Boston improved his mobility, but Dad's illness was terminal. He returned to Bermuda to work and to politics in February 1993. At the time, I was living in Kazakhstan, and when I learned about Dad's diagnosis, I made plans to return to Bermuda to stay with him throughout his illness and I'm grateful for the opportunity to work closely with him in his last year. I'm also very happy to have had the connection, the opportunity to connect with Clemmy, who I really had only seen previously on university holidays. In the book that she wrote about Dad, my stepmother Robin says that Dad started working on his private member's bill because of a gay bashing sermon at a funeral that he attended in December 1993, where homosexuality was described as an abomination. It's disheartening to consider that some in our community continue to use the same language and warp thinking 25 years later. Another reason for the initiative may have been my father's recognition that with the limited time left to him, he wanted to address a wrong done in 1971 when a similar decriminalization effort failed. Today's event and parade would have made my father very happy. He would have been proud to participate in it, probably from the train. It's sobering to think back to May 13, 1994, and to remember how close the vote was. 22 votes in favor, 16 votes against, and one abstention. And in fact, the bill might not have been debated at all. Weeks earlier, a UBP MP had proposed a motion to delay the debate for six months, which would have killed the bill 
and by that time my father would already have been dead. Thankfully that motion was defeated. Remember also there was a group that called itself the Christian Coalition and they were joined by the Salvation Army and they marched seven times around the House of Assembly as if it was the walls of Jericho in February 1994. <laughs> I'm pleased to note that while our then premier encouraged people to keep on marching, and he voted against the bill at the time, he has since spoken in favor of LGBTQ rights, and rainbow flags fly in front of his building today. I'd also like to thank the PLP MPs. This is a private member's bill, so people didn't have to vote along party lines. The PLP MPs who voted in favor of the bill on the day. Dame Lois Brown Evans, Dame Jennifer Smith, Dr. Ewer Brown, Alex Scott, Frederick Wade, David Allen, Renee Webb, and Jimmy Williams. I'm humbled by the bravery of Peter Carpenter, who was the public face of Dad's bill as spokesman for the Bermuda Human Rights Alliance. We should also remember the contributions of Senator Norma Aswood, Quentin Adness, Dr. David Dyer, and many others. We all owe a debt to those who have worked to advance LGBTQ rights in the years since September 1994. And we owe special thanks today to Chen, David, and Liz for organizing Bermuda Pride. Words matter. Words spoken and not spoken by public figures matter even more. And while we celebrate Pride today, we need also to remember Upi Ming, whose murder in September 1994, less than a week after Dad's bill became law, can be attributed to a great extent to the hate speech in 1994 and the atmosphere promoted by opponents of Dad's bill, whether they were in the Christian Coalition, the House of Assembly, the Senate, or on the radio, or the Royal Gazette. Knowing what we know now about the increased incidence of self-harm and suicide in the LGBTQ community, and among LGBTQ youth in particular, the sooner our leaders today show some real moral courage on this issue, the better. Thank you. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, the Stubbs family, give them a big round of applause. I know why we're hiding this. Turn it around. Same reason we're hiding it. Bermuda Pride, how are you doing today? Remember, there will never be another first. You are the beginning of it all. You bring it together. You are the gel of it all. How about that parade this morning? Like I said earlier, if there's anybody new, Bermuda, the world is just catching up. We might be our first parade, but we had colors on our houses from decades ago. We've been ready for this rainbow parade, huh? Whoa! Oh well, yeah, starting from the beach to the sand to the pastel colored houses, white rooftops, we embrace everybody every day. Proud to be Bermudian! Oh yes. Oh, colorful life. It is a colorful life we lead if we just open our eyes and see. Welcoming. It's friendships we have if we open our eyes and embrace it. It's all there for us to have a beautiful life and to help others assist in theirs. Where love is love. Where we embrace each other. All ethnic groups. All mankind, because we are all human and we all belong to the human race. Anyway, enough of that, because we're going to get to some BMDS melodies and mimosas. And if you all know, after a few mimosas, everybody has a melody. So let's welcome up to the stage, 
Melodies and Mimosa! Yeah, 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 yeah.
ladies and gentlemen, don't stop them now. Sorry about all that feedback. Beautiful, how are you guys doing? Are you having a good day? Having a great day. Yes, I love all your colors today. Yes, yeah, so and when you come around, take a look at all of their beautiful eyelashes too. They have rainbow eyelashes on. They are working it. All right, thank you so much, ladies. All right, next up, we have a performance by another BMDS group called Wine, Women, and Song! All right, come on, queens. Let's give it a go.
Tulsa's BMDS, ladies and gentlemen. Weren't they beautiful? Also, just a little bit tidbit of information, BMDS, which is right over here, also has a bar. So if you need to go inside, catch some air conditioning, feel free, and to grab a drink as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Feedback, feedback. Feedback. All righty then, Bermuda, how are you doing today? How are you feeling? Did you enjoy that? Woo! Well, we're bringing it all out today. Next up, you know, you, you can't go all the way without, we are British, right? We are British. Yes, we are. And you know, we can't do anything without the Queen. And we're going to introduce you to the Queen of Bermuda, Miss Sybil Barrington. Now, Sybil Barrington, to her credits, is a, in a movie, Tu Wong Fu, starring Patrick Tracy and Wesley Snipes. HBO series Oz. Two books. One called, they call themselves Queens. But quiet and crisp. Second, one of the most influential gay entertainers from around the world appeared in just about all the talk show circuit except Oprah. That's right, Oprah is still trying to catch up. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the Queen. Bermuda, Miss Sybil Barrington. All rise. Let's get this party started! A ring drill. Oye, tienes una amiga para mi amigo, que es sencillo. Le digo al oído. Oye, tienes una amiga para mi amigo, que es sencillo. Le digo al oído. Oye, tienes una amiga para mi amigo, que es sencillo. Le digo al oído.
I want them to know this is not the song. I still learn the song there. This is actually the Queen's Amtourage walking in song.
Come on, give it up, ladies and gentlemen. Queen of Bermuda, Simone Barrington. The party has been started. You are free to roam the country. That's just a warm up. She just wanted to tease you because she's going to be back at five. And watch out there. The party's already started. Dan, come on, give it up for Simone Barrington, Queen of Bermuda. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're enjoying yourself on this first ever event in this 21 by 1 Square Mile Island. Y'all having a good time? There's more people here than what I can actually hear, so I'm gonna ask you again. Are you all having a good time? All right. Now, up next, we have, uh, what's her name? DJ, DJ LA, right? But before she enters, a friend of mine from 19 or long asked me to play one song. I'm not gonna tell you this song, but I know everybody in here knows this song. And if you don't, you ought to be beaten. So I want you to listen carefully and sing along. There's somebody special in the audience and this is all about you. 